So uh, this morning, I know there's been a lot of activity probably, uh, probably today and a lot of things going on. And, um, but I want you to think for a moment, to think back to those moments in life when you are dreaming about how things are going to go. I mean, it could just be this morning. How is Christmas going to go today? It might be a fairly simple dream. It might be a little bit more elaborate. But what are those times when you are dreaming about how things are going to happen? It could be like a graduation um, or a wedding or the first day on a new job or a new position um, that you're taking on. Or it could be uh, dreaming about how it's going to be, to be when you become a parent or when you became a parent. What did you think it was going to be like? What were you dreaming about what you would hope it would be like? I think at some point we all figure out in there that there's a difference between what we're dreaming and what reality is. I mean, all it takes is about the first one or two diapers at 3 a.m., like big poop explosions, you know what I'm talking about. And you're like, how can this little thing have that much stuff in there just two hours after I just changed one that he did that previously with, right? Not that I'm speaking from experience there, but, um, but at some point we figure out that there's a difference between what we're dreaming and the reality of the world that we live in. The things aren't always going to go the way that we want them to. Now, I've said this before, and I will probably say this many times again, that I think the thing that makes us unique among all of the animals, that, that lets us be in this position that we are in this world, is, is that we can actually have those dreams. We can project ourselves into the future, into a future situation. We may, may or may not know anything about it this time, but we can see ourselves in there. We can imagine uh, what that will be like. We can dream about things that we want to do or how we want them to go. I mean, take another example. This one might be a little bit hard for, uh, for us to deal with. Uh, uh, it might be hard to come up with one, but how many of us right now are dreaming about a summer vacation someplace nice and warm. Right? Um, now, as you're watching this, uh, Emily and Jack and I are on a flight down to Galveston and uh, um, to meet up with family for a little vacation. And, and we're going, and this is Texas, right? I have lived in Texas. I know what Texas is like. And I know just how far south Galveston is. I've been there a couple of times. And part of me is dreaming about this little vacation and thinking about the warm temperatures that we'll find, the ability to go sit out on the porch just a little bit before sunrise, drinking a cup of coffee, reading a book, watching the sun come up over the ocean, um, enjoying the warm weather. Now, to be fair, anything is going to feel warm after the last few days, I know. Um, but uh, even, it's still going to be a little bit cool, even, uh, you know, I mean, it is still going to be winter, and, and Galveston, while south, is not that far south. We're not down into the tropical climate yet, uh, and so while we're down there, it's still, the highs are only going to be in the upper, mid to upper 50s. I mean, heat wave compared to here, but not something, uh, you know, my, my dreams of sitting out on the porch having a cup of coffee probably are not going to happen, um, so I've got to kind of adjust that a little bit. Um, you know, my, probably I'll be sitting inside close to a window doing this, but you know, at some point we hit reality though. Like reality comes kind of crashing in and things are never quite like the way that we dream that they're going to be, right? Um, when we have kids, it is nothing, having kids is nothing like what Pinterest says having kids is going to be like. Um, when, uh, when, you, when you go into a new job, it is uh, never quite the dream job moment that you think you're going to have because there's always some hiccup in the middle of this somewhere, probably with HR, because that is always a confusing quagmire of things. Um, and even your wedding day. Like there's, what I tell couples when we come in and they come and they come and they get married, and I say, you know, um, you're dreaming, you're thinking about your wedding day. Let me, be first, let me be the first to tell you that it is going to go nothing like what you are dreaming it is going to be. Something is going to go wrong. Something isn't going to go as planned. And, uh, but then I get the, have the ability to tell them and say, that's okay. Why? You're not going to remember any of it anyway. I mean, you remember parts of it, but you remember mostly the feelings of it. And I tell them, just relax and go with it. Because the most important part is what's happening on uh, that day. Um, it's, everything is going to be okay. But that's the challenge, though, isn't it? 
that's the challenge. And it's how we deal when things are different from what we are dreaming of and the reality of what they actually are. There's that difference that is hard. How do we navigate through, through that? This was Simeon. This is where Simeon found himself. In. Because Simeon, depending on how old he was, and we're assuming here that he is an old man that, um, as he is coming into this towards the end of his life, just the way he is phrasing things. So um, depending on just how old he is, Simeon could very well have memories of when Israel, the last time Israel was an independent kingdom, before the Romans conquered them and installed Herod as king, uh, as king of the Jews, um, he would have had memories of what that would have been, what that would have been like. Simeon would have grown up learning about God, and and we're told that he's a very faithful man, and so he would have known about the coming Messiah, and he would have done like everyone else did, which was to assume that the Messiah was going to be a great general of great armies that was going to lead the Jewish people into overthrowing whoever it was who was in control of them so that Israel could be restored. And maybe he even grew up dreaming about what it was going to be like, uh, maybe to be at the side of this Messiah in the last battle when the final blow is struck and, and this Messiah who is king and who will become king is riding around on a horse with the sword held high in victory over, over their enemies. Or maybe... He's dreaming about that day of the coronation when everyone is all gathered there for this incredible ceremony and there are heads of nations and states uh, from all around that are coming and, and paying homage to their new king and bowing down to him. Or maybe it's the dream is just of how wise this new king would be, this Messiah. So wise that would make Solomon the wise, the great king Solomon look foolish. These are all dreams, excuse me, that Simeon would have had about this Messiah. And those are all dreams that make sense when you know who Simeon was and the life that he lived and the way that he grew up and the things that he knew and the faith that he had. Those all make sense. It's the world that rarely works in that fashion. We can dream dreams like that because we only ever know in part. We only ever know part of the story. We only ever see glimpses and pieces of it. We have a few answers. And so we can dream big dreams, but they never seem to match with what happens. Because here's the thing to remember. Here's the thing that we fundamentally get wrong all the time. Uh, when we try to dream dreams like Simeon did. And the thing that we have to remember is that God is already God. God is already God over all creation. What does, what does God need dominance of other nations for? God already has all of creation. What does he need to establish his dominance over other peoples? God has already made all of the rules that everyone follows Already, for all of the fighting that nations do against each other, they are ultimately all still playing by God's rules. And how do I know? How do I know that they are all still playing by God's rules? Because they all die. That's what they do. That will always be a thing. Um, because that is God's rules. The failure for us as a people is to live, uh, for us as a people to live by God's call, is that we die. That's what, that's what marks our failure, is that we die. And it's not so much even that we die, it's that we die without anything, without hope for something beyond there. Where death is an end, where death is something final. It's not that we serve one kingdom over another. Kingdoms and nation building and nation states and all of that are products of sin that has come into the world that says that we have to establish dominance over each other in some way or form. Um, that is a product of sin. For all of our fighting for dominance, God is still ultimately the one who is in charge because whether or not we like it, we are still bound by his rules. Because ultimately, whenever we don't do as he is, death happens and death is final. 
And this is the thing to remember about anyone who wants to try and take our faith, our Christian faith, and try to make it about, um, in some way, dominating other people or forcing others to, um, into believing just as we do, um, uh, or, or uh, make other traditions conform to what we are. And uh, that's not at all the point. Because what does God need us to do um, uh, those, um, those kinds of things for? Because it just means that we're going to fall by God's will also because we've been doing it wrong. God says with the Messiah that he is going to do something different. That God is first going to show us how this world actually works. By sending his son into it. To come and to live a perfect life so that we can learn that it is possible to live a perfect life, to live a sinless life. And that that God is going to show us in process of doing that the effect of sin uh, on the world. Uh, because whenever a perfect life enters into an imperfect world, there are going to be problems that are going to come. Things are going to happen because the imperfect does not know what to do with that. But then God is going to show us how even when our understanding of how the world works says that Jesus is dead... God's actual making of the world shows us that Jesus is alive. And the reality of that is much greater than what we can dream of. And I think Simeon gets it. In a moment when he holds Jesus as, as a baby, um, I don't think Simeon's like getting uh, a flash forward of all of the things that Jesus is going to do. I just think that he gets the feeling and the hope that this is exactly how God wants things to go and that all is right with the world because of it. Simeon's faith lets him let go of his own expectations and his own dreams of things um, for the reality of the child that he is holding. I think Simeon understands that what he was dreaming of is not going to be how things are actually going to go because they don't have to go that way at all but that they're going to be greater still than that. And Simeon knows that he is probably not going to be around to see when all of this happens. I imagine he's in there holding the child, and he's looking around the temple at all the folks that are there. The temple was a very busy place. Looking around at all the folks that are there thinking, you all don't know what is coming. You think you know what's coming, but you don't know what's coming. And... Uh, He's looking at him going, and boy, what a ride it's going to be. And all of it will be because of this child. Simeon shows us that things won't always go the, the way that we think, and that's okay. In fact, that just means the world isn't going to work according to our understanding of it, and that probably is good for everyone. Rather, what we hold, that in those moments when we have the choice between what we are dreaming of and what we want, versus what is going on around us and what God is showing us, that God is going to win out every time because it is his creation, it is his world. Ours is to hold to what God is doing. Letting go of our dreaming for the promise that what God is doing is so much more. And what we are really looking for in this life of faith is the day, when the day comes when we don't actually have to let go of our dreaming anymore because our dreaming matches what God is doing. And that's when God's kingdom will truly be revealed for all of us, for the promise of what he is doing. And I cannot wait for that day. Have a great and a wonderful Christmas. If you're listening on the radio, you're a week behind um, our in-person or online worship. I hope you had a great Christmas and you're having a great new year. And may each of you, through this holiday season, draw ever closer to the one who Simeon held in his arms. Who Simeon knew that he could let go of his expectations and see and feel the world that God is creating and recreating around us. And that is filled with so much more. May you be filled with joy just as Simeon was. 
Amen. We all do this in Christ's name.